here at Cape Coast and um, we're in the slave castle where thousands and millions of slaves were taken, captured, thrown into prison cells, stinking, sweaty, airless cells full of excrement, full of bloodshed, full of dead bodies. Many of the slaves were taken. They went through the door of no return. They were taken out to sea where they were put onto the ships in disgusting, crowded conditions. Many of them died on the way. Usually only about a quarter of the slaves even made it to America or South America or wherever they were going. Many slaves who didn't survive in the castle were thrown into the sea dragged out of the cells. Those that are ill, dragged out and thrown into the sea. So this very sea right in front of us is just full of the dead bodies of millions of slaves. And this very ground we can hear the cries of husbands and wives being torn apart, children being sexually raped and abused with their fathers powerless to do anything. We're here to repent on behalf of the church. We're here to see a shift and a change. want to welcome all of you this morning to this public service of rendering apology for the transatlantic slave trade. To repent of the sins of our forefathers and even of our orphans and to ask God to heal them. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says, if my people, you and I, who are called by name, by the name of the living God, if we will repent, forsake our ways, and call upon him. He will hear us. That's a promise. He will not only hear us, he will forgive us our sins. And assure, assuredly, he will heal our land. Yeah. Once the earth is soaked with blood, you know, this is a situation that calls for action. Genesis tells us in chapter 4, verse 10, God told Cain, the blood of Abel, your brother, cries to me from the soil. So even then, there was a blood crying from the soil. But then if we consider the situation of the slave trade, you know, there was so much blood shed the fact of wailing, the fact of being led where the person did not want to go, the fact of leaving the familiar grounds, the fact of traveling unwillingly was all, you know, sign of resistance. And so called for somehow punishment, somehow became curses and so on. Because you drag a person where he doesn't want to go and the person cries to God for help, that somehow places that sign on the place. So all that formed part of the reason that we are to pray this morning. Forgive me for what I have done and for what I have to do. What I did wrongly is sin. What I could have prevented but did not prevent, what I did not do is also sin. So we have the sin of commission 
we have the sin of omission. Either we commit it or we omit the good that must be done, that is sin still. So the church's understanding over the years was like the understanding of the world. At that point, it being, you know, when slavery was going on, got to a time when people were even given the option. Either you choose religion or you become a slave. There was no, there was no middle way. The ship is there, ready to, to load the people away. Do you believe in Christ so that we free you to serve your God, your nation, or you, you, are, you are a pagan? If you are a pagan, go and become a slave. So the, the understanding of who the human being is wasn't that strong at that time. And then, surprisingly, it got to a point when even people considered that the, the black man had no soul. You can imagine the pain when a mother had been separated from the children and the, and the husband and taken away all of a sudden, never to come back again. You can imagine the pain, the bitterness, when a young, able-bodied man, the hope of the father that if he was not there, the, the man would take over the family, had been taken away all of a sudden, never to come back. You can imagine the pain when a young lady, the eye of the mother, had been taken away, never to return. You can imagine the pain on the hearts of people when people were put in chains and marched into the dungeon, the smelly dungeon, and, wait, and for them to wait for days before the ship arrived. Some died there. The pain when people were carried in a ship into a strange land a land which was completely strange to them, completely different environment. You can imagine the pain on the hearts of people. You can imagine the pain when a human being was rendered almost naked and put on a platform and auctioned and sold like an animal. You can imagine the pain when our fathers were sent there and they were on the farmlands working the whole day with very little to eat. No wonder they said, nobody knows the trouble I see. No wonder they sang, we shall overcome one day. It is this blood they shed. It is the tears they shed that have constituted a curse on our land. And it is appropriate that we come to the Lord and pray and ask for forgiveness. Amen. God is so forgiving, so merciful. And we believe and trust that he's going to forgive us. Like Osofu said, if people who are called by my name will repent and come to me and cry unto me, I will hear them and heal their land. May God hear our prayers today and heal our land. May God hear our prayers today and nourish our land. May God hear our prayers today and replenish Cape Coast and the environment. May prosperity come to Cape Coast after today's activity. May we see people rising up after, Cape, after today. May God visit his people and give us his grace. Stand in one accord with all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus our Lord. And all the indigenous of this land our brothers and sisters from Liverpool and agree that this is a necessity. We may say that it has been overdue, but God does all things in his own time and does it perfectly. So we are grateful to God for a time like this. And one thing we are asking God for is that he will cause his spirit to descend upon our land, to bring conviction of sin, of judgment, and of righteousness that our hearts and our minds will be turned from evil unto him, Jehovah God. That we will desire to serve him and him alone. For there is no other God than the God of heaven. God help us. I thank those who through the mercy of God, this message has come for all of us to assemble here. And I am confident 
that starting from tomorrow, things are going to happen. Amen. Because this has penetrated our children to the extent that people talk to their seniors anyhow, no respect, children abusing elders, and it has degenerated into the lives of people in Cape Coast. And as has already been said, we are moving from up there and gradually sinking down. Let us from now on resolve with the, with the help of God that enough this is enough. Amen. This is not going to happen again to Cape Coast. And on behalf of my chiefs and the people of Cape Coast, you know, a chief never dies. That is why we have a, 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 the first, the second. A chief is supposed to go to the village and he returns and continues. So a chief never dies. In other words, if my predecessors were part of this, it means I, standing on because of, of, of the institution of chief dancing, I also took part in what had happened. Because some chiefs aided in the whole uh, um, slave trade business. So on behalf of my chiefs, myself, and the people of Cape Coast, we sincerely apologize for any mishap, for any inconvenience that our actions has caused anybody. And looking at the positive side of things and the linkage with Liverpool, I am suggesting that once you are here, let's start break, uh, bridging the gap, bridging the bridge, and start charting a positive course between the two cities. The mayor is here. We can start looking at a sister city relationship, which will bind the two cities together because we have a common history so that we will build a, a better future for our children. That's bringing the two cities together, looking at the bad side and turning the bad side into a positive and a better side for the two countries. Thank you for the incredible welcome that you have given us. Thank you for your love and I'm so excited in the sense of how quickly God has been moving in your midst. And I really believe God is going to bring a substantial breakthrough. And I want to say, are you ready? Are you ready to position yourselves for what God wants to do? For me, our story began in 1999. I was asking God why, like you've been asking God, we weren't seeing breakthrough in Liverpool. Why were we not seeing people coming to salvation? Why was it so difficult when you preach the gospel to see just one or two people getting saved? Why was that happening? And God said to me, there was a spirit of death over our region. And the spirit of death doesn't come in while God's asleep. You know, he has um, his eyes upon us all the time. And so I said to God, why has this spirit of death come upon our city? And he spoke really clearly and he said it was because of Liverpool's part in the slave trade. And so like many people before us, we began to pray. And I just want to honour John Manuel who's here. He's been one of those people amongst many people in Liverpool that has cried out to God and sought God's mercy for us as a city. As you know, we were very much a part, probably 1.5 million of your slaves were taken in vessels that came from our city. 
And we are so ashamed of that. For many years, Christians have cried and cried out to God. And we have a merciful God. We have a God that when we repent, he turns his heart towards us. We continue to pray. And at the end of December 1999, the 8th of December, the Bishop of Liverpool, James Jones, and Councillor Mike Storey, the Liverpool Council leader, issued a declaration of repentance and remorse. This declaration, we know, did go to many parts of the world. It was taken to Benin. It was taken to Richmond, Virginia, and we know it's gone to many, many places over the years. This is what it said. Liverpool City Council expresses its shame and its remorse for the city's role in this trade of human misery. The City Council makes an unreserved apology for Liverpool's involvement in the slave trade and its continued effects on the city's black communities. The City Council hereby commits itself to work closely with all communities and partner with the people of those countries who carried the burden of the slave trade. During the summer of 2005, the team that I am a part of began to really um, seek God again. And God spoke clearly to us because if I commit a sin and I repent to God for what I've done, God is willing by his grace to forgive me. But if I keep saying, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we never step into the breakthrough. And God spoke to me and he said, it's time for you to stop repenting. It's time for you to sow life. And so from 2005, the team that I've been involved with, we've been coming to Africa since 2005. We've been working in Uganda, we've been working in South Africa and some of the worst, most violent townships. We've been working in Rwanda and we've been working here um, for the last two years um, through Archbishop McCarthy and Mother Maria. We feel very privileged um, to come and to serve Africa and to sow life. But we began to see the curse that we believe came from our involvement in the slave trade beginning to lift from the land. The blessing of God started to be released very powerfully. One of my favourite passages of scripture is from Isaiah 61. And I ask you to make this your own passage too. It says this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. God says today, the spirit, his spirit is upon you to make a difference. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, for the day of vengeance of our God. It is up to God to bring the vengeance. You know, we can judge, but God is the one who brings the breakthrough. Hallelujah. It goes on to say, the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the spirit of despair. God wants to give you a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Cape Coast, God wants to come in such power that you display his splendor that everyone will know that only God can turn your city around. 
it goes on to say, they will rebuild the ancient ruins. You know, they is you. In Liverpool, they was us. We had to stand in the gap. Our city was bombed during the war and we had acres and acres of derelict, broken buildings and land. And we had to pray in the goodness of God. We had to go to the, the throne room of God and begin to release everything that we needed to see the transformation of our city. And it says they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. You see, in Isaiah 61, Isaiah learned that for every negative thing, God had a solution. God had the opposite to be taken hold of. In Liverpool, we didn't find the enemy. We began to look at the problem and say, what is the antidote? What is the answer that God wants to release? And as our team and many others began to pray, for everything negative, we prayed for the positive. And I really want to encourage you, as you go away from today, saying, well, what happens next? You begin to pray. And you begin to ask God for every negative thing, what is the solution? Because our God has no favourites. God does not love Liverpool any more than he loves Cape Coast. He wants to pour his spirit out. And so in Liverpool, every time jobs were lost and we were in a season of major unemployment, we began to pray for 10 jobs to be released for every job that was lost. We prayed for new businesses. Last year, our city was recognized as the place with the largest proportion of fast growing businesses anywhere in the UK. And that is a move of God that would never have happened before. But we began to call on God. We thought our children deserved good education. And we know Cape Coast, you're renowned for good education. But God wants to increase that. You know, so we prayed. And then we had the biggest school building program in the whole of Europe. You know, don't you want to see God releasing resources so that your children and your grandchildren, you know, can have the best education they can possibly have. Our River Mersey was really polluted. It had very little life in it at all. As we prayed, we, we went on the ferry in on the river we sowed salt into the river and we prayed and today our river is the cleanest it's been in over a hundred years we have all kinds of wildlife in our river that we have never had before god is moving in the thriving film industry we have many many muslims coming to liverpool we are a center of refuge where refugees are coming from all over the world. Many, many of them are Muslims. And I want to tell you, many of them are coming to know Jesus because Jesus is moving in our city like never before. We were in a hotel in Accra just a few days ago and we were praying for a young lady and as she moved out of the seat, a gentleman came running up to us. He said his name was Ali. He said, I need you to pray for me. So we began to pray for him. He was a Muslim. Within five minutes, he'd given his life to Jesus. You know, God is moving here as well. You just need to be ready. You just need to position yourselves. I personally have been involved with baptizing many, many, many Muslims, which has just totally... Um, blown me away at the goodness of God who is bringing Muslim men who are encountering the love of Jesus in a dramatic way and we just really thank God. We had terrible housing, many many communities that had been promised money many times and it had never come. There was hopelessness and despair and gang warfare going on 
People were killing one another. It was a really difficult time. But as we prayed and as we sought the Lord, we began to see money being released that had never been released before. Those communities were bulldozed and whole new areas of beautiful houses were built. You know, we've seen many of those gangs dismantled and some of those gang leaders have either got saved and come, they're now in church or they're in prison. I don't want you to think that it's perfect. It's nowhere near perfect, but it's nowhere near where it was before. God is moving. Our police struggled with huge issues of crime. We were one of the worst areas for crime in the whole of the UK. And as we began to meet with the police and to partner with the police and for, to pray for them, they began to have more success than they ever, ever had before. Our police began to get all the national awards for success in crime. You know, God has shifted whole loads of things in our city. We have a thriving tourist industry. You know, you have a beautiful coastline here. It is absolutely stunning and absolutely beautiful. And, you know, I really believe that God wants to do something really dynamic and really special. In the last 10 years, we've seen our number of hotels double and they're still doubling, they're still developing. We have 100,000 tourists coming in on cruise ships. Just a couple of months ago, the BBC came to Liverpool. In the past, whenever film people came to Liverpool or the news people, it was always to say bad things. They would always find the most derelict place to film. They would always say negative things. But a couple of months ago, they came and they were reporting on the transformation of Liverpool. Only God, only God can do what he has been doing. <laughs> Cynical City was won over because people changed. And God wants to say to you today, whether you're an injured party, whether you're a victim, whether you, your family were part of the slave trading, this is a day of new beginnings. This is a day of repentance. This is a day of deep sorrow for what has happened. This is a day when our hearts should truly be broken as God's heart has been broken. But this is a day of grace and a day of mercy and a day of new beginnings. And as we choose to let go of the anger and we let go of the brokenness and the bitterness, God can move. God can move. Instead of our city agreeing with the negativity, you know, we can say, oh, Cape Coast, it's such a mess, and Cape Coast this and that and the other. We need to start blessing. We need to start speaking the goodness of God over Cape Coast to begin to say, Cape Coast, God has an incredible destiny for you. Instead of the door of no return, it's going to be a door of destiny where people begin to step into the plans that God has for them. Now, Liverpool has been um, claimed as an economic model of transformation by our government. It's been recognised. You know, what can God do with Cape Coast? I want to ask you that. I want you to go away today and ask God, what does he want to do? Because he wants to do it through you. You know, it's not through somebody out there. It's through you, the church. The mayor of Liverpool, Joe Anderson, recently said, culture, tourism, and the visitor economy is now worth six billion pounds. That was six billion pounds we never, ever had before. God wants to bring breakthrough here. What does it look like? This has not happened overnight. Please don't expect that when you come for the Thanksgiving service tomorrow, everything will have changed. It takes time. It takes commitment. It takes endurance. It takes prayer. It 
takes a positive attitude to believe that our God wants to do immeasurably more than you can dream or imagine. What kind of legacy do you want your children and your grandchildren to have? Because it's in your hands. It's in your heart to how you respond. Ernest Hemingway said, today is only one day in all the days that will ever be. But what will happen in all the other days that ever come depend on what you do today. This is a significant day. Finally, I want to share from Romans 8, um, verse 18 to 21. This is from the Passion Translation. And it says, I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. Cape Coast, God is wanting to unveil a magnitude of his glory in you and through you. Amen. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. That's you. You might not have felt glorious when you came in, but God wants to fill you with his love and with his glory. For against its will, the universe itself has had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequences of human sin. But now, with eager expectation, all creation, all creation of Cape Coast, all creation of Ghana, all creation of Africa, longs for freedom from its slavery to decay and to experience with us the wonderful freedom coming to God's children. We want to give God the glory for all that has happened in Liverpool. He has mercy upon us. We look to him for the completion here of what he is beginning. We do not boast in what God has done in Liverpool, but we give glory to God to encourage you today that no matter your circumstances, our God loves you. Our God has an incredible destiny for you. And our God has brought you here for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. And the central region of Ghana, as well as the whole nation of Ghana, wish to apologize profoundly to all people and families in Ghana. To everyone who was affected or died due to the inhumane treatment of fellow Ghanaian ancestors who up to 500 years ago sold or perpetuated or collaborated with Western partners to sell their own for whatever reason. Today, we openly apologize for seeing ourselves only as victims when we sold our own and allowed this to happen. We recognize this. We recognize this is completely unacceptable. We unreservedly repent and we ask for God's forgiveness and your forgiveness. We acknowledge that people were forcefully removed from their homes and loved ones. They were taken to the slave markets up and down the country where they were sold against their will to be taken overseas. We repent and apologize. We are ashamed and regret the pain caused, the wrenching apart, and the disruption of families, <coughs> husbands from their wives, and children from parents, 
affecting all levels of human relationships. For the generations lost, for the tears shed, the misery caused, for the mental, spiritual, and physical distress felt, the ill health, broken hearts, and premature deaths caused by broken dreams and the disruption of people's lives. For the sin and the repercussions of the bloodshed of millions of innocent people on our soil, for those killed on our land and in our sea, we repent and apologize. We recognize with us with Abel's blood, the blood of those ancestors taken has been crying out for 500 years ago. This is a grievous sin, and we humbly cry out to God in repentance and apologize. We recognize that the church was complicit, worshiping in the building above the dungeons whilst our brothers and sisters suffered below. Our women were stripped naked, paraded for selection to be raped by the governor and his men, often impregnated. When the children were born, they were given Western names and carried an air of superiority, breeding further division and disunity. We we'll repent and apologize for the curses that have been spoken by those taken, causing the Cape Coast region to repress in its development. For our sin, which has suppressed God's plan for Cape Coast as a town, we are truly sorry. We recognize that. As a result of our sin, doors have been opened to the demonic, especially an orphan spirit and poverty spirit. This has given the enemy access to attack us and our descendants, causing a lack of progress, ill health, hunger, learning difficulties, poverty, sexual immorality, powerlessness, quarreling, fighting, and a lack of identity and unity. We repent and apologize. We give thanks that the church brought the gospel. However, we are so sorry for misusing God's word in ignorance to endorse slavery and will repent for using scripture to manipulate and control. The church, the body of Christ in this part of the world, makes an unreserved apology to our brothers and sisters affected by the slave trade, some who have returned back home, others still in other lands, and those who have died. The church, the body of Christ, makes an all-reserved apology from Cape Coast and the Central Region for its involvement in the slave trade. We apologize for continued effects of black communities taken to the shores of the Caribbean, United States of America, and Europe. The church is hereby committed to working closely with all partners and those countries who have been burdened with carrying the effects of the slave trade. 
the World Economic Forum estimated in 2017 that there are 45 million men and women and children trapped in slavery. By the blood of Jesus, we take authority over the sin of our ancestors that may have resulted in the seed sown for modern slave trade and people trafficking. We ask the Lord to suffer and uproot the modern slave trade wherever it is operating. All this has been made possible today because of the example of Liverpool, who were heavily involved in the slave trade. Liverpool did not want to enter this new millennia with the burden of the sin of the slave trade in the city. In 1999, after many years of prayer and cries of repentance, the leader of Liverpool City Council the Anglican Bishop of Liverpool and others issued a declaration of repentance to the whole world. This apology that we are giving today is a direct response from Liverpool. Liverpool's example, and today we see representatives of Liverpool here with us on this journey. So we would like to extend love, forgiveness, reconciliation, restoration, and unity to Liverpool for their bravery in stepping out and their willingness to support others who want to follow their example. God has used this example from Liverpool to open our eyes so that today we too in people can come to the point when we can apologize to the world for our lack of initiative in standing against the wrong and being accomplices in the slave trade. We recognize and accept Liverpool's apology from 1999 and we not only release forgiveness to you, but we also repent and apologize for our part. We choose to forgive ourselves and those from our land and other lands who have perpetuated this grievous sin. We ask those who have been the victims of this to forgive us and to be reconciled to us. We ask God to forgive us and to bring reconciliation, restoration, and healing. So be it through Jesus Christ our Lord.
that have been vested on our land. As we stand at this gate of no return, we let go the pain. We let go the orphan spirit Amen. locked up in this padlock, never to return to our land, never to return to our hopes, never to return to our generation. And I go. prophetic action. What's a prophetic action? A prophetic action is a physical deed that has spiritual implication revealed by the Holy Spirit. Um, in the Liverpool uh, testimony this morning, um, our sisters said that uh, there they are, they are seas in Liverpool. We are polluted and unproductive. But what happened? It was revealed to them by the Holy Spirit to move by ferry and use salt. And that salt they use has spiritual implication and also is biblical. Second Kings chapter two, uh, 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 Second Kings chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty-one. We see there the people in the in that particular city saw that everything was going bad, and it was the people themselves that came to the prophet Elisha, and they said to Elisha, "The situation in this place is bad." So they agreed that their condition was bad. And Elisha used salt. He took the salt and poured it in the sea. And things turned around. So this is what Liverpool did. But today we are going to do just like as in Genesis chapter 4. We saw something there that I think represents what we are going to do today. The first murder. The Bible said, according to Genesis chapter 4, from verse 8 to 12, when, when, when Abel killed his brother, the Bible, God said, he called Abel, he called Cain. He said, where is your brother? He said, I'm my brother's keeper. And the Lord said, the voice of your brother, the voice, the blood of the voice, I mean, blood's voice. He said, your brother, the brother's blood is crying from the ground. And the voice has come up to me. And now cursed is the ground for your sake. It shall not bear fruit. So the ground was cursed. Now what are we going to do? The Lord Jesus came, according to Hebrews 12, 24. He said, the Bible said, he is the mediator of the new covenant. And the sprinkling of his blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So as we think we are going to pour this in the sea, where the blood is crying, those who drown, those who are, who are thrown into the sea and they die, the blood is crying. As we pour the blood of Jesus, those voices will be silented in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will be at peace and will be silented. Yes. But first, it was the ground that cried yes. for blood. As we pour it, we silence the cry. Yes. As we pour the blood of Jesus, yes. we silence the cry yes. of our ancestors yes. who are crying out. Yes. We say, peace be still. Yes. May your soul rest in peace. Amen. We say request cut in packet. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you rest in peace. Amen. From henceforth, those souls, no more crying. No more crying.
going to make declarations. And I will encourage you to make those declarations with me, together with all the actions. As I step through the gate of return, return to hope, return to prosperity, return to goodness, return to goodness, return to restoration, return to restoration. Return to reconciliation. Return to reconciliation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare and decree. I declare and decree. That the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. That the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me. Because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me. To proclaim good news to the poor. To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to find out. He has sent me to find out. The, the broken hearted. The wounded and the broken hearted. To proclaim freedom. To, to proclaim freedom, freedom. For the captives. For the captives. And release from darkness. And release from darkness. darkness. From, for the prisoners. For so the, the prisoners. So we'll step. And make sure you step. We will step out of the shadows. We will step, step out of the shadows. shadows. And encourage everyone we know. And, and encourage everyone we know. We know. Step out of the shadows of the slave trade. To step, step out, out of the, the shadows, shadows of the slave trade. trade. We declare the open spirit. We, we declare the open spirit. And the spirit of poverty. And the spirit of poverty. Is broken off our nation. Is broken off our nation. It is time for Ghana. It is time for Ghana. To step into freedom. 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 We declare. We declare. This is the year of the Lord's favor. This is the year of the Lord's favor. For our lives. For our lives. For our families. For our families. For our city. For our city. And for our nation. And for our nation. It is time for us. It is time for us. To receive. To receive. And wear. And wear. A crown of beauty. A crown of beauty. Instead of ashes. Instead of ashes. The oil of joy. The oil of joy. Of morning. Instead of mourning, and a garment of grace, and a garment of grace, instead of a spirit of despair, instead of a spirit of despair, Ghana, Ghana, Cape Coast, Cape Coast, will be called righteous, will be called righteous, strong, strong, magnificent, magnificent, distinguished for integrity, distinguished for integrity, justice, justice, and the planting of the Lord, and the planting of the Lord. We declare, we declare that we will rebuild, that we will rebuild the ancient ruins, the ancient ruins, and restore the places, and restore the places long devastated, long devastated. We will no longer be ashamed. We will no longer be ashamed. We will receive a double portion. We will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, and instead of disgrace, we will rejoice in our inheritance. We will rejoice in our inheritance. We will inherit. We will inherit a double portion in our land, a double portion in our land, a double portion in our city, a double portion in our city, a double portion in our homes, a double portion in our homes, a double portion in our lives, a double portion in our lives, and everlasting joy, and everlasting joy will be ours. Will be ours in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have made these declarations. We have made these declarations, and we have decreed, and we have decreed. And it shall come to pass. Amen. 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 The clergy are present. The media. Our brothers from the diaspora. Delegates from the United Kingdom. Distinguished invited guests. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cape Coast Metropolitan Assembly receives with joy the opportunity to make a public apology and repent of the ills of the transatlantic slave trade that took place across the globe, for which our metropolis was a major trading and shipment hub. The Assembly expresses its shame and remorse for the city's role in the trade in human misery and sincerely apologize 
for Cape Coast involvement in the slave trade and its continued effect on the African descent upon our own people. We, have, we acknowledge the pain and suffering that the trade in slaves brought to our people and communities. The loss of our casemen and casewomen, shattered hopes and dreams of our people, trauma and pain captured and traded persons, other related ills for which the city of Cape Coast is sincerely sorry and remorseful about. As we apologize, we also repent and ask God's forgiveness and for the forgiveness of our families and communities of those who lost their lives in the trade. We ask for forgiveness on the earth that opened its mouth to swallow the blood of the lost souls and pray to God to heal our land. Yes. And heal the Cape Coast Metro Assembly commit itself to work with all stakeholders who have carried the burden of slaves who have carried the burden of slave trade, slave trade to try to redeem some of the ills and to right some of the wrongs, including this public apology. We pray that the Lord will forgive us, and heal our land Amen. and our people, and that we will also learn to forgive ourselves yes. and to work together with a new edict for the reversal of the wrongs of the past Amen. for a better and brighter future of our land and its people. Amen. On behalf of the people of Cape Bush, I congratulate you all for taking part in this very important yes. occasion. Thank you and God bless us all. Amen. Amen. It is over Cape Coast and the central region. I have a dream of my beloved city of Cape Coast and the central region where people understand who God created them to be and live in their destiny. Where people care for one another and people are welcomed and loved. Where biblical marriage is honored and precious. Where children can grow up in a safe home with a mother and father who love and care for them where there is no poverty, physically, financially, and spiritually, where there is no orphan spirit, where our elderly people are cherished and honored, where there is no gang violence, no racism or hatred because people are different, where there are no murders or violent acts, or bullying, manipulation, or control. Where there is no domestic violence, no street prostitution, brothels, or sexual exploitation. Where there are no additions, alcohol, drugs, pornography, gambling, etc. Where we have a police force without corruption. Where the local government govern with heaven's strategies. Where our environment is clean and healthy. Where nobody goes hungry or is left outside on the streets homeless. And where all people have suitable homes. Where all people have sound and healthy minds. And there are no suicide or self-harming. Where the media is edifying, unbiased, and truthful. Where justice is honest and fair. Where education enables and empowers everyone to reach their potential. Where Jesus is truly Lord and every other faith group has bowed the knee before Jesus. Where there are no idols, where the church is full of people who love God and love to worship Him. Where there is a sense of belonging and nobody is left isolated. isolated. Where the church is led by anointed leadership, teams operating in their gifts. Where leaders are appointed by God and not man. Where the church leads 
to glorify the King. Amen. I have a God who loves my city of Cape Coast yes. and the central region yes. and the people who live, work and visit. I have God who will be glorified in Cape Coast yes. and the central region yes. and who can make the impossible possible. Yes. Ephesians chapter 3, 16 to 20, Passion Translation says, I pray that Father God would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory Amen. and favor Amen. until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Yes. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions, how deeply intimate and far-reaching His love is, how enduring and inclusive it is, endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. Your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. Yes. He will outdo them all Amen. for his miraculous power Amen. constantly energizes you. Amen. So I have a dream. Mm -hmm. What is your dream for Cape Coast mm -hmm. and the central region? Mm -hmm. We can have a dream that can one day become a reality. Yes. 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 Let us promise God Promise ourselves and promise Cape Coast and the central region that we will pray for the prosperity of this land. Yes. If Cape Coast and the central region prospers, we too will prosper. Yes. So be it, God. Yes. Jeremiah 29 verse 7. Kofi Annan said, to live is to choose, but to choose well, you must know who you are and what you stand for, where you want to go and why you want to get there. Let us choose life today. Amen. Amen. Amen.